my peeps. Um, this is Kristen of Christopia Studios, of course. Um, just wanted to let you know what I'm doing today. It's probably the biggest thing I've ever done as far as pour painting, blowing fluid around, etc. Um, and I, I'm, I know you heard that noise, so I'm going to have my um, helper hand me what I'm going to use to blow the paint around. Cool, huh? So, um, I, I can't use an airbrush for a painting this size. This painting is two and a half feet, so I guess 30 inches by four feet, which is 48 inches. So it's big. Um, and a few weeks ago, I saw Gina DeLuca, and look for her on YouTube, it's Gina DeLuca. Um, maybe it's Go Make Some Art with Gina DeLuca, I don't know. But anyway, she was doing um, kind of a galaxy nebula pour, and that's what I really want to do today on this giant canvas. You might see a little bit of orange underneath the black. I've already coated it in a thin layer of black paint, um, two parts Floetrol, one part whatever paint you use, as long as it's a pretty decent paint. I used um, Artist Loft the Pour paint variety, and I also put a tiny bit of Artist Loft Silver into every single color that I'm going to use. I'm using a few different colors than Jeannie used, but they're kind of similar because I liked what, what turned out there. So I put the blue on here, and this is an old painting that I painted years ago, this old abstract orange monstrosity that I'm done with. So that's why you see those bits of orange, but you won't see them later when the painting is done because a lot more paint's going on this canvas. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and even if you do see a little of the orange pop through, that's part of the nebula experience, I guess. So we're going to go ahead, I've already put, and this is going to be kind of a combination of what people are now calling a Dutch pour and uh, moving the canvas and, um, and some other stuff probably. So um, just this is a, an experiment because it's a used canvas. Um, new canvases are a little too expensive to experiment on right now. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is kind of decide on the shape of what I want my nebula to look like. There's a nebula, I can't remember what it's called right now. I'll, I'll put it up in print later maybe. I'm just going to put a line of silver. I don't like it when things are straight across on a painting. And then let's go with, I really like this kind of magenta-y pink color, so I want a lot of it. So I'm gonna, I'm, you know, I'm reserving some paint. I don't have to use it all. There's about four or five ounces of each color in here. Though so I had to use two um, full of these kind of cups for the black. One is on the canvas, the other will be used in a few minutes. And then let me put a little bit of, this is kind of my own mix of sparkly pink with, uh, with a little mica powder, or not mica powder, um, a little shiny metallic powder mixed into it. Notice I'm just kind of pouring randomly. It doesn't have to be perfect or centered or anything. It is um, Perlex powders. I used to use them on clay, and I still do sometimes, but I'm not doing clay too much these days. So, All right, now let's get a little bit of this really nice blue, and I'm going to keep the blue a little less than that, but kind of confine the majority of it to this side. Where's my mark? Where's the balance in that? All right. And then here's just a little bit of turquoise. All of these have a little bit of the silver in them and a little bit of Pearlex powder for a, just, just a little more shine. I like the shine. I don't want to use as much of the turquoise. So we're not gonna 
I'm gonna put a tiny bit more silver on the outer limits here. This seems like plenty of paint. So I'm gonna stop there for now. And then this is where the whole um, Dutch pour business goes into effect. I'm going to put a pretty good layer of black right around the edges of this. Wow, that's a lot of black. And instead of, well, yeah, maybe I'm going to blow it. I'm taking my gloves off because I don't want to get paint on the mini leaf blower because I'm not the only person in my household that uses it. In fact, I'm not the main person in my household that uses it. This is the first time I've ever used it. I'm going to speed this up here so you don't have to listen to the mini leaf blower and also talk about a lesson that I learned in um, using a tool that's a little too big for the project. I think I should have stuck with an air dryer or a hair dryer, uh, not the mini leaf blower, because I may stop and pause it where this happened, but um, apparently my blower was a bit too powerful and now my studio walls and some paint jars and some other items are splattered in black paint. So lesson learned, use the tool that's right for the project, not the giant, not the leaf blower. You might notice that my nice, lovely assistant is now walking around with Rubbermaid lids so that I don't splatter more things, including him, because, yeah, I got him too. So those pants are now forever going to be work pants that he's wearing. Um, so as I'm working with this leaf blower, I'm just noticing that it's a little powerful in that it might be blowing things too much and blending my colors too much to make them a little too muddy. So I'm going to um, consider, I'm adding a few more colors just to see if I can still get more color on with the leaf blower. And eventually I'm just going to have to wait till the thing dries to see if it works. But um, I'm going to add a little more color, try to use that thing again problem is I can't switch to my hair dryer at this point because my hair dryer died and I haven't bought a new one yet so I'm I'm still trying to make do with the all too powerful blower so we'll see what happens but just a whole bunch of little mini dutch pours kind of thing all around the canvas I think I'm going to finish with this. I'm going to use my baby leaf blower, which won't destroy things. And that is this little guy. Obviously, not quite as strong, but a little less dangerous. And I just have it attached to a battery pack so I don't have to USB it. It's the only problem with this particular little creature is it has to be plugged in. Okay, well, I feel like this experiment was successful in a couple of ways. Number one, I learned that neither a leaf blower nor a tiny leaf blower were the right tools for this job. 
I needed a hair dryer. Number two, creating the right amount of color is much tougher than it looks on a canvas this size. And three, I'm probably gonna wanna add more after this dries because I have a feeling I might lose a little more of the bright colors when the drying process finishes. I'll show you this when it dries and when I decide whether or not to add to it. Aside from the splattering redecoration of my studio walls, this was great fun. I hope you enjoyed watching as well. Please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for more art content. Hit that little bell if you want to be notified when my next videos go up. There's also a link below to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined, as well as a link to my Facebook art page. I hope you're staying safe and that you have a great day.